Well, the time is up, and now let's get started. Very soon. I mean, right now. Thank you for coming. And first of all, self-introduction. I'm actually from Alibaba Cloud and Machine Name. And today I want to basically talk about how to use Istio to manage the cross-regional and cross-cluster microservices on Ali Cloud. And I got another colleague with us. He's actually one of our clients, and it's Lo Xiaojun from Uni Korea and basically two parts here. First of all, I want to tell you on our cloud, how are we going to use this tool to manage the service and what exactly is the work programs in this area? And as for the second part of presentation, it will be done by Liu Xiaojiu, that is, in terms of reality, how to use the issue on Adam Cloud and how it's implemented. And eventually, we got a demo for your reference to see how exactly it can be implemented. Based on this thing, I feel like most of you might have the question, why do we need the multiple regions or clusters, such as in Apple? In fact, on the Alley Cloud, we got multiple clients, and based on feedback from them, I just summarize what we have to do. You can see on the screen, why do they need the multiple regions in clusters management? Basically, three categories of responses. The first one. Business continuity as well as disaster recovery demand. That is to say, we need to avoid as much as possible the problem in our business due to one or not failure and don't put all the eggs in one basket only. And we do need the stability of the operation, and that's the reason why we need the mobile regions clusters management. And secondly, as for our clients, as for their business, or the end users, my biggest distributed all over the world. Some of them are in China, and we got Northern China, and Southern China in America, we got Western as well as Eastern America. And based on this clients in different locations, we really have to be really covered all the geographically distributed end users. We need to reduce the access latency, and also to meet local legal and data regulatory compliance, and also in some of the specific use cases, as well as industry due to their own characteristics, we do need to ensure that the data related work will really have to be based in a specific region so that we'll be able to ensure that we can really meet the local legal and data regulatory rules and regulations. And thirdly, we do need to take into consideration the aforementioned two demands, and we do need to lower the barrier to set up the network connection activity in the past. It will cost a lot for us to do the cross-regional operation, but now, based on our cloud technology, we do have a lot of, I would say, tremendous or exceptionally good connectivity on cloud or gateway, if you like. Therefore, all the services can be interconnected with each other. That is cross-regional connectivity, and in this way, we'll be able to lower the barrier as well as the cost to do the setup of the network connectivity. In this way, the cross-regional as well as multi-cluster management can be really available to all the people and to deliver benefits to all the end users. And as for multi-region or cluster, what does that mean to ACK? What is ACK? We will basically focus on ACK in the rest of our presentation. And ACK specifically refers to Alibaba Container Service for Kubernetes. And as for multi-regional or cluster service, what does that mean to ACK up until now? For ACK that is on the cloud of Alibaba, we basically have 18 regions where they are our services and servers available. That is to say, if our clients have their overseas business, or some of them based in China, or have business out overseas or vice versa, then they will be able to have the cross-regional management service based on ACK. That's for this picture you can see here on the screen. For ACK, especially issue on ACK, what have we done already? First of all, issue on ACK 
is actually based on community demand for operation. We do need to do the integration with Alibaba Cloud Services and open source in terms of e-commerce. Therefore, you can see that there are four aspects here. The first one, we have a substantial integration with Alibaba Cloud. For community, we have the monitoring as well as tracking, all kinds of services like that. And in the community version, we have different components. And for all these components, it cannot be applicable to the production scene, for example, for Prometheus. Whether it can be closely linked to the storage for the end users and as for Tracer. If we have such a very reliable, I would say, backstage for maintenance as well as operation, and as for all this, it has already been integrated with a little cloud on ACK. And based on our experience for the tracer analysis and mode turn and TSDB and all the database on cloud Prometheus storage, everything I've just mentioned can actually be integrated with Istro. And basically, that's the first piece of work we've already done. And also, from August last year, we indeed try to provide ACK on Istro. And within one year's time, we've already have over 100 clients who started to use Istro. And some of them are still in the market survey phase, but anyway, we have collected many feedback from all of them about different channels. And based on their feedback, we try to constantly optimize and try to improve the user experience. For example, for UI or API, we have already done some of the optimization work already. And basically, that's the second priority of our work. And thirdly, it's very important to know that we need to see some of the traditional industries will have to be moved to the cloud. And we have come across this situation for some of the traditional applications. It can only be running at a physical device and we do need to move that on cloud through container or other methods. We cannot just wait here. I mean, we cannot just bring that to ACK so that we'll be able to use Istro. Rather, we have already put Mesh in place to ensure that when there is a hybrid cloud, we'll be able to put all the applications as well as container service to mix with each other. And in this way, we'll be able to manage all the traffic as well as the relevant services all together. And also for any cloud, besides traditional Caspers, and also with our service Kubus, and that is in the form of service we need to provide our own service. And it can also be applied to several scenarios for ACK. We have already provided service part as well as KBS part to manage them together as well. That's the third one and the fourth one. And you might be interested in that that is multi-cluster method or approach. For ACK, we just provide a specific method to manage and cover other KPIs from, for example, Google's GKE or other GKMs. We can use an anonymous way to do the management, but at the same time, we can use ACK or other regions' KPIs. And in this method, we'll be able to use and manage all the KPS clusters. And based on that, we can use each tool to manage the traffic on the application as well as the operation level, for example, the file transfer and things like that. And that will be the priority for us as well. And as for today's theme, we're going to focus on multi-region and here, I just 
listed two features here. And what exactly is the demand or requirement from the clients? The first one is that about locality-based service routing. And for this concept, you can see from the picture that we got Alan Cloud Global DNS at the front end. And based on the source of the demand, it will be able to match a device gateway. And at the back end, for different regions, we'll deploy different applications. For example, you can see user one, uh, region one and region two will have different configuration, and we have to meet the very demand from the region regions. For example, in region one, we got service one will be the priority access. And the service two should have the priority access to service three. And in this way, we'll be able to reduce the latency of service and try to improve the user experience in this way. And also, for automatic failover, for some of the region service, for example, if it just goes south or if there's a bug or any problems, that is to say, your service has been down, then what we need to do? We, we do need to have the capability to do with failover, and you can see that after the service in region 1 is down, then through our service, we'll be able to automatically and fastly switch to health check and deliver that again to some of the healthy region and later I would just demonstrate that in the demo eventually. And to summarize a little bit, that's actually a multi-cluster pattern of Instagram. And for all these patterns, you'll be able to view that on our official website and just single out some of the shining points, for example. And in the first place, we got uh, Isho 1.0, and we got single mesh probability, and we have the single control plane here, and it have, has different requirements, for example, flat lab work, where all part CIDRs in every cluster must be routable to each other, and also the part of CIDR ranges must be unique, and all these demands as well as requirements make it really hard for the clients to use that in the first place. And now we got the version 1.1, and based on the meeting all these limits I've just mentioned, and for example, before part, we uh, don't have the connectivity, or if there is conflicts in terms of the part service CIDR, then we can use our service to connect each one of them. And as for RSK, we have already provided all the relevant services to support that and have the unanimous management methods to that. And as for Mesh Federation, we just combine the Cooper Federation probability for Instrual Federation and Cooper Federation can be combined into one and so as to provide the capability in this way. In this way, we'll be able now, let's just take a look at I would say this is some of the UI improvement and some of the feedback from our clients for Instrual. The parameters can be really complicated, and the end users might find it's really hard to understand. And for UI like this, it's actually based on the feedback of our clients, and all the setup can actually be transformed into parameters, and through simple configuration, we'll be able to move the client's demand in this way. For example, all we need to just to click all the requirement or the entry to see, for example, whether we'll be able to have the capability of enabling locality-based service routing, or should we really have the control address traffic, things like this. If you want it, then you just click it. And everything can actually be automated in this way and real, really user-friendly. Then how the backend can help us to actualize or implement all this. And at the backend, based on all this demand, we have best operators. And for ICK, these operators will be able to make full use of the parameters in the front end to manage them at the back end and for visual operators.
In order to draw up some of the often used scenarios, for example, the uh, access, the multi-cluster management, and eventually we have these two CRDs within this operator, and that is to use as less as possible CRD to get things done. As for CRD, you can see that on the screen. For example, if you want to put a control plan in your CRD, then you will have to use ISRO CRD. As for ISRO CRD, we do need to designate some of the parameters. For example, you can see the parameters in UI, and you will be able to match them between these two. And then you decide whether you do need the access as well as the health and culture, things like that. You can define that by yourself. And it's much, much better in simpler company with the traditional method. Thought. And everything can actually be coordinated automatically. And as for multi cluster mode, in order to access the remote cluster, we do need another CRD that is remote cluster. And here, we don't have that many parameters. We just need to just add it to the control plant. And here is a picture showing that for ACK, in order to support the multi cluster, this, in this picture we can see the first mode, the flight light mode. For the ECU operator, we can see we monitor and listen CRD, which we just mentioned, to monitor the uh, effect definition of the customer to see the value of the parameters. And also, it will coordinate it. the final deployment. The ability of control under the multi cluster mode, it can not only manage the automatic one definition here under the multi cluster. There's a local cluster, or central cluster, and for other clusters, there are the remote clusters, of course. So the ECU operator can not only manage the local cluster, but also to coordinate the remote cluster and know the relationship between them, how they can join together, and all those background staff can be handled. In this way, operator can manage the issue together, including the life cycle. One thing is important is that in the, in the past, if you use the community version to install and update, you might encounter it with a lot of problems because we have gathered similar customer feedback before. But now we use Istio and we can upgrade smoothly. And in order to become compatible with the past version, we and here this picture is similar with the previous one, just like we've mentioned. If the two clusters are not connected and only can be connected by the common lab, we can use the UV method to connect the two. And uh, if you have opened the community version, you will know that there's a very complicated parameter definition between them. And the operator you used, you do not need to pay attention to it anymore. You can just leave it to it. And here on the side, we mentioned that we need to pay attention to the cross region. How to achieve that? This slide illustrated that in Kubernetes, as we all know, there are two labels on one node. In the public cloud, we have those uh, labels. And using those ones, we will know currently which service will connect to the exact pod. And via those information, you will know the end pod, the location of the end pod of your service. And for all our operators, we can monitor and listen all the services in the service mesh. Their uh, information regarding the region, and we can handle all those information. 
And you will know for the access to the service, the request party and the receive party, how to match the two. If targeting each of the request party, we do not have a specific one, then how to match? In this case, our operator, just like you've mentioned, for example, like in, on the Ali Cloud, we have 18 regions. We will, based on our previous accumulation, we will find out the best uh, servers, server to match the services. And via this kind of a recommendation, we could uh, find the most suitable service supplier. Um, so that's all for my sharing. Next, I would like to invite Mr. Liu, our customer, to share with you their uh, user experience. Okay, thank you. And, uh, I'm from uh, in Korea. I'm glad to be here to share with you, and uh, my topic is uh, our user experience in our company. So in the next 10 minutes, I would like to first briefly introduce the uh, business scenarios and the key problems. And targeting those problems, I will further illustrate our solutions using Istio while, uh, with a simple demo. The first, a brief introduction to our business scenario. For Unicron, we are a company providing the online education and the talent solutions to the global talents, uh, global customers. So covering uh, people in America, Europe, and Australia, etc. So for our family, the structure of our professional team, considering that we have a developed uh, model, the development and operation are combined. In Korea, the technical team, based on AliCloud and the container service, and on this basis, we need a very mature management solution and combined with Kubernetes. Next, is based on our business scenarios, I'd like to talk about the key problems that we have encountered in this is the single region. Uh, deployment, there will be high latency across regions. Sometimes, so there will occasionally be extreme latency due to a cross region network fluctuation. And uh, previously, for the traffic management, we will use Kubernetes Ingress. And it is uh, relatively weak and not very convenient, quite complicated. And for Kubernetes Ingress, we have a certain degree of extension, but it's not very compatible. And for the technology we use, it's not very mature. And even like Java, they are mature solutions. They have a high requirement for the developments, and uh, currently we do not have a very good solution to combine with the native Kubernetes. So here, that's the key problems we have. And via this uh, topology picture, we can briefly introduce our plan. So from this picture, it's not that complicated. I will introduce one by one. First, we can see four gray areas and they're representing the current regions that we have support to. And for the white regions, we represent the Kubernetes clusters in that region. As you can see, there are two areas, two regions, and the two are on the left, two on the right. There are altogether two matches. Now we can only look at the and the and this match they combine together. It's more detailed. 
For the dismantle of the solutions, we use the two on the right. Here, I think we know a little bit about the plasma fingerprint test. It will go through the DNS in the middle and go to the nearest region. The request goes to the PG region. The range and is to get away. Maybe let's go to the front end to the API. Uh,大家都在网上，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料，我们把资料
Java is so because it's often communicated with the database. Well, we, in the data center, we deploy it in the current data center. And is divided into regions. And for the optimization of the data, we use cloud. That is our current solution. And next is our demo. Demonstrate here show these two clusters in this one mesh as an example. Our users in the north of China in Beijing a cluster. In Hangzhou, and this is actually the issue of the function based on the location is in the second domain. Let's take a look at the following of our features. For example, for the VP application, we got API, and in two locations, we use the services at the same time. If we request for the APIs now, for, example, for this one, then the request will be filled to another location. And the same API location application scenario. And basically, that's the native function of Israel. And now let's do a demo here. Uh, in order to facilitate the demo, we see the demo here to access the application in Hangzhou. We will be able to see the application in Hangzhou and through this IP, we will be able to access the application in Beijing. And what at the same time, you can see Hangzhou on the left, Beijing on the right. And now we can open up the request log of API. Some of the logs are actually the old ones, we can just refresh it. And let me check it. Right, everything's just fine. Now we can take a look at here. Hangzhou on the left and Beijing on the right. And this is actually in, in two different locations. And on the left, you will see the API service in Hangzhou. And the application log is open. And now it's being refreshed. And on the right, you'll be able to see the API service there. And we've already opened it up and refreshing it. And now we can send a request for the application in Hangzhou for multiple times and API request and then we got API request log and basically that's for Hangzhou and application for Hangzhou as well and we can just empty that if we want to access all the functions in Beijing then the logs can be on the API the application lock of Beijing, and we can send requests multiple times. Just a moment, we've already refreshed that. And basically, that's it. You can see the request of Hangzhou will be able to refresh the application log and service with situation in Beijing. And that's actually the function I want to demonstrate here in terms of Israel. And now let's take a look at the developer of Israel. For example, for Beijing, the API, all of that, all of the APIs there are down. And what we expect is that the service layer can be still up and running and maybe you can even get that from as well. Here is the demo. You can see the dashboard here. And the first one is about the front end API. And as that's the health check for Beijing and Hangzhou. And in Beijing, it's spring and everything is fine. And now we just shut down the surface layer. And now, as you can see, it's been great. Now, and now we can see the access for both Beijing and Hangzhou is OK. And now we see if there is a 
็บเอพีไอบอกว่า all the API is down in banking. Now we can just turn off the card, as you can see. This API service is now as in red, and we can just open up the request log, and basically that's the Beijing's API request log. <laughs> and they need a timeout because we don't have any further examples there. And now we just send a request to the applications in Beijing and see how it really goes. For the first time, it will take a longer period of time because internally they do need to judge the request for several times because it's a passive failover. And later you will see the 500 error. And then when we do the request again, right here, you can see here, that's the error. And now we do the request again, you can see the access is quite new and it's okay. And it's application in Beijing, and based on the log, you can see the logs of hundreds already popped up. And as for Beijing side, everything's just time up there. And here's the demo. And now, I would like to briefly upon the benefits from Istro on ACK. First of all, it can, of course, simplify the Istro deployment and operation later. Secondly, it can actually integrate A to E observability with Alibaba graph services, but at the same time, we will be able to, in this way, improve user experience for common scenarios. While at the same time, it can help us pinpoint several problems with this product. You see the configuration automatically recovery if necessary. And as now, it will be able to unify management for high and cloud migration. And it's it's 100% cloud native, and it is very compatible with the open source community. And basically, that's what I want to share with you. And basically, that's the speech today, and thank you so much for coming for our speech. Thank you.